and um, we're just waiting in the archive room tonight as well as myself we've got um, Dave who will be taking you through the slides and we have um, the uh, Gala Rog from the Romney Home and Dim Church Railway um, we've got Chris Munn who's currently trying to adjust our projector um, which is been slightly temperamental and we've also got uh, Bob who's one of the museum trustees as well. Um, <laughs> it hasn't frozen, we've just not started moving yet Will. And there's a few more coming in. We're do that for now. We want rid of that. Someone's there. David Rounds says hi, Bob. Hi back. Yes. Hi, Bob David. says hi back and uh, good evening, Matt. Right. So I think that's everyone. We will hand over um, to Dave to talk us through. Um, what did Claire call it? Fun at the festival. Fun at the festival. <laughs> and we've. And we've just, uh, uh, PVZ has arrived as well. Just be careful of the wires, Peter. Do you, do you want a chair? Just a chair. Oh, Sorry, I'll come. come that way. Oh, <laughs> Not yet. Chris, you might need to readjust it. <laughs> it's, much, it's much calmer when it's just us two days. <laughs> Yeah, seems to be back into these. <laughs> so, right. I'm waterproof. Yes. Yeah. What? We, we will now go. Are you all sitting comfortably? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like the lights, I well, it's up to, entirely up to you because I, see, I okay. can see my screen either way. Right. right. Off you go, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Good evening, folks. Um, we were going to do a combined uh, garden festivals, but we found there was actually quite a reasonable amount on the Liverpool one, so we thought we'd split them up. And I might even persuade David Mosley to join in on the other one, Gateshead. Gateshead. Yes. Um, but I'm still working on him now. Um, just as a sort of very brief introduction, and I deliberately edited my comments on this one um, to try to be apolitical. Um, why was there a garden festival in Liverpool? And the answer goes back to 1981 and the Brixton riots, which sounds a bit odd, and then the Toxtas riots. And both of those were the result of overuse of the stop and search um, guidelines by the police and because it was mainly targeted at uh, black youths um, there was a reaction. So Michael Heseltine in his wonderful middle-class way proposed that they would tidy up a little bit of what he called the inner city which wasn't and make this wonderful garden festival and um, a load of new housing, which wasn't for the impoverished. It was very middle class. And the picture you're looking at now, the left hand side of it is now middle class housing. But anyway, we'll move on, we'll move on from that. Um, the overall site was a bit odd and some of the gradients were I think were described as challenging. Um, I don't think it was designed by a railway engineer, but that caused problems and made some of the trips much more interesting. And though there was the main line, which was what was described as a pair of spectacles, if you think Salvador Dali actually designed them. And then bottom left, um, 
one of the two entrances, the Herculaneum dock entrance, uh, had a branch line, which was operated by our Silver Jubilee. And that, that went through to the festival hall in the center there and joined the main line. Uh, um, Highly technical, um, excuse us. Um, yeah, so th this is more of a, a rail guide to it. Um, the operation of the main line around the spectacles was essentially clockwise. And just letting everyone in. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thanks, Nigel. Um, then, so this, this is the left hand spectacle and Herculaneum station down the bottom, uh, the Britannia Inn at the very bottom, which was also intended to stay. Uh, and you can see it snaking around to join the festival hall. The right hand spectacle went round the lake, two lakes in fact, and around the arena and laser dome and the festival hall and came back up again. This was the site before they started work on it. So this would be 1982. And it was fairly derelict, but I still can't see any working class people there, sorry. Um, so we've moved swiftly on to early 1984 and the development has now gone quite a long way. Festival halls built, the arena behind it. Um, and you can see some of the left-hand spectacle front. Uh, it's just another version of that. Um, minor interest in there is there's a, a train on the left-hand spectacle running towards bottom left, um, parallel with the, the Mersey. And the top end of the site, if you like, had carriage sidings and the engine shed, which are in the left, bottom left of frame here. So, and here we might have to uh, persuade someone else to join in on this. Um, <laughs> the... I will then, I'll finish. I'll <laughs> highly entertain you with something. Yes, the, the theory was that Silver Jubilee, sponsored by British Rail, would run the branch line and essentially split off the people coming in that main entrance because there was quite a steep road stroke path um, from the entrance. And it was felt that the Silver Jubilee would cope with people with prams and the elderly and whatever else. Um, and as I said, it, it was sponsored by British Rail and it was due to go away to be painted I believe, until a very short time before dispatch when several cans of assorted HST executive livery paint arrived at Ravenglass. And our uh, painter there did several days overtime to try and get everything painted. It's a shot from the other side. And the paint was more or less dry, I think, as, as they well, were. I'll entertain you before we send the one away. <laughs> right. If you go back one. Uh, right. Uh, you well, may have to turn around. Turn around. Turn around. I'm sorry. The I'll mic's over here. To the screen. <laughs> OK, well, I'll talk to the screen. You can see this is the original power car. But if you go back another picture. You'll see at the back end of the train, the, uh, what was the trailer control unit 
has had a lump taken out of it. And you can just see the panel off where another engine was put in. And <clears throat> this was going to be uh, quite revolutionary because it needed the two sets of um, equipment to work with each other. And Ian Smith had more or less sussed out how that should happen. And they were needing the extra power, both the reliability uh, or what should we say, dependability, and to get up a gradient. And the end was it was running for the main entrance to the centre of the site. It was going to be full every trip. Uh, so we were all up against it. A, the engineering side to get the two power cars operational and mated to each other and potentially with another car in the middle. Uh, there were going to be four cars at one point, but the center one was converted to the first wheelchair accessible saloon. <clears throat> anyway, at this moment of crisis, Neil Glover, stalwart of the society, Chris's dad, was coming to help me. And we were rubbing down and making preparation on all the vehicles, we've got them dotted around the railway and uh, moving them around from place to place one weekend. And Neil said, we've just pulled a socket off because the vehicles were connected by caravan sockets. Oh dear, said I, <laughs> or words that effect. So we looked and we found one of the other socket connectors and we worked out the seven wire sequence and we wired it up as per the seven bar sequence. On Monday morning, the engineers wanted to try this vehicle out on the line. I hope you're not too bored by this, but be entertained in a minute, because we explained to the chief, we've done a wopsit, sorry, Gov, but we have put it back together like it was, you see. Uh, anyway, they took it out and they discovered it would do nothing like it was supposed to. Like one end would go one way, the other end would go the other way, or the, the wiring was completely goosed. <clears throat> we weren't very popular, you can imagine. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I was presented with the diagram, which the engineering side had several colorblind people at this point. I was presented with the wiring diagram. Now, you read off the colors on that diagram and well, number one was whatever, red, da, 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 all the way through. I had wired it up as per the diagram. Something was amiss. And it turned out that what they had done was connect everything up using a meditator to work out concept connectivity and all that sort of thing. But they built into the system a sort of spiral like a DNA. So only if they had all the carriages in the order that they built them, would it work? <laughs> if you put, they were trying to run them with whatever they were doing, because there were four carriages and so on. Um, whatever combination they got in, blue reload, they were in a difficult position. Eventually, bless them, man over matter or mind over matter, they beat it. But you can imagine the number of permutations possible on seven wires times, I don't know what, you know what I mean? Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, eventually it all went on the wagon and got delivered. <laughs> <laughs> what, what powered silver do you repeat? Then, yes. or BMC, something or other, literally things. Mm -hmm. Later on, it got a big, uh, a big engine um, like, ended up in Sheila, I'm sure. It's had such a checkered life. Um, but, you know, the aim was to have a simple get up and down the valley on the trains that no longer exist. Mm, right. And thankfully, we'd found some masking tape. That was what saved the day. A cheap yellow masking tape that you could uh, put down the side and, and you know, mask up to, because you can imagine. I got a rollicking off Douglas because we only had, this was only the third vehicle painted in intercity colours. 
and I was doing it off a picture that appeared in Modern Railways or right. something. It wasn't a whole got, Yeah, got the little, and, and Doug, you've got this all wrong, you've got this all wrong. Uh, well, well done, we've got, anyway, we've done two by now, you see. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were pretty near to it when it came. <laughs> Yes, I, until basically weeks before, it literally was like that. These were going away to Crewe or somewhere else, uh, maybe Crewe and Derby, I can't remember. And they were going to be done by the apprentices and it was going to be done for us until the paint appeared. <laughs> <laughs> it did look smart though, didn't it? Oh, I, I, yes, I think it looked absolutely, and it went. It was a, I don't know, dear old, Come on, the engineer. Come on. Got him on. He must have lost hours of sleep and hours, years of lifespan. Well, bless you, Roger, wherever you, you're out there somewhere. He was a hero. <laughs> and it was our local Hawley of Um <clears throat> Oh, I can't remember his name from Bobbert's way. I would love them up. It's uh, John Southern, Peter. Hi, there you are. <laughs> Trevor and I were going trips to uh, offload at the other end. I must admit, going through Toxteth day by day, I did think actually it was fairly smart housing. I appreciate some, um, you know, the <clears throat> background. <laughs> But I did think it was actually a lot better than parts of some of the places around here. Careful, Peter, we don't know who's watched. <laughs> <laughs> the other little story before you move on, before it actually got to the paint stage, when it was in its four-car unit, when they put the engines in either end, and as you said, Peter, they were up against it all the time, uh, you know, to meet deadlines, and it must have been, I don't know, what would you think, end of February, March time, maybe even slightly later than that? But they were anxious for it to have a run in its four-car formation and sort of grab me, you know, you drive it all the time, you take it up the valley, take it for a run. But it had started to snow quite <laughs> confidently by the time we'd got it all hooked up together and actually getting it to go in the right direction. But he was still insistent that I went out with it and it, as you well know, Peter, it's not very good in the snow. Uh, <laughs> so we're not going to get very far here. No, 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 you must get a run, you must get a run. Well, I got down as far as a half mile post before everything underneath clogged up completely. And I had to walk back in and get the Perkins to, to tow us back home. So that was the end of that first test run as a four-car unit. And I cannot remember, possibly not long after that, it went back down to a three-car idea. <laughs> can, I, can I butt in and tell you one more story before it goes? Yeah. Because if it gets forgotten, it will never get remembered. The other <clears throat> thing that came up was suddenly this was going to be potentially a royal train because Her Majesty was going to open the festival. And somewhere along the line, she had to travel on this particular line. As it happened, it didn't happen that way. The Romney sent their splendid royal saloon, and we'll see it in a minute with Sheila pulling it, Sheila and having the great honour of, you know, the very rare honour of pulling Her Majesty, or Late Majesty. From this account, the news had just come through that our Queen, quote, was going to travel in this. And so I had a, a deputation in the paint shop, don't stick to it dears, the full set of lady directors and Ronald Coyne, newly a chief executive, came down <clears throat> and what was required to turn the centre disabled access wheelchair saloon into something fit for potentially the royal carriage. Well, the discussion went on for some time. It went to some degree, or well, poor Ronald was trying to get a decision. And it went round and round and round as the lady from Ambleside, Mrs. 
the chairmaker, whatever she was called, was going to do a specially upholstered chair. So it's going to be panelling down the soft the colour of the carpet. Ronald was trying to get a corporate decision out of the three ladies. This was somewhat um, um, I couldn't remember, elusive. I'm trying to choose my words. It was, he couldn't write it down fast enough before they decided oh, on something <laughs> else. Anyway, Douglas chimed in after a while and suggested, da, 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 da. oh, oh, right. So they would agree to that, and they were all leaving, and I can hear this Mrs. Hensman now saying to Douglas, well, you got your own way then, didn't you, Douglas? <laughs> Just chosen the right moment to mm. pop the right idea. <laughs> oh. Possibly one that would work. Uh, well, I, but, I mean, it would have been lovely because Richard put a lot of effort into some little wooden panels that covered the top down sinks and uh, with the fancy chairs and mm -hmm. carpet on the floor. It, it would have been really nice. Oh, sorry, I'm yes, stealing. Quite right. But, yeah. <laughs> but you'll it's all a, remember Douglas it's all getting the right story. Story. Exactly. Yeah. Peter, uh, well, just before we move, just very, very briefly before we move on, when it was all panelled out and, and, and made good, uh, wasn't there, was that the occasion when it was taken for a run to Mike's side to see how it travelled with the panelling and the seats and everything? And it came back with somebody forgetting to blow the brakes off. And it came back in, well, this is just the centre car, came in with a load of flats on it. Oh, no, I didn't remember that. But... Yeah, I'm sure that was the occasion. They'd run round at, at Mike's side and, and, and coupled up, but not coupled the brakes up and towed it back with the brakes still on. And I've got this idea that the engineers had to work like Billy all evening and into the night to skim the wheel sets for it to be somewhere yeah. near ready. I'm sure oh, I did, I that, that did happen, and I think it's that occasion. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> We've got the picture, though, wasn't it? I mean, it got on the wagon because it had to be delivered yeah. at the right time. That was the other bizarre thing. They'd literally just fastened up the railway, and this was the, uh, the railway up until a certain point had been broken at crossings mm. over the track. And then when the crossings were in, the railway kind of had priority over them so it could then operate. So until then, the railway had been built in the sections between what would be the level crossing. Mm. Was, was there an incident between uh, JCB and Silver Jubilee? I don't recall myself. I don't think there's any it's, touching up required. It, it's but something I'm, I'm chasing. Yeah, yeah. One day. Keep going. Right, so um, <laughs> here, here we are at Herculaneum. Um, this was where everyone piled on. And you'll notice we've uh, nice and subtly added Ravenglass and Estelle Railway um, uh, at the bottom there, along with the double arrow. And off it pops, and the aforementioned Britannia pub, um, which was quite a distinctive shape. So one just passed there. So in the, just Sorry. going back to that picture, people who think of Liverpool with like the Liver Building and where the Alaman Ferries go and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. which direction is that in? It's um, camera right, right, if you okay. like. So the Mersey runs up. Um, I'll just say that way. That's Birkenhead. Yeah. This is me talking. I never got there. Did you not? <laughs> no, it, it, um, it is to the top right, Dave. You, you're right. Um, the road I, into Liverpool these days tends to go past that pub. Um, right. So that is one of the main routes into, into the city. Oh, so it's still a landmark then? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, good. And this was called something strange like play center station um so this this is the top end after it's come all the way around so festival hall is behind you at this point um <clears throat> we'll we get away from the silver jubilee um the original plan i believe 
was for Samson, Black Prince, and the Bug to basically operate the main line. And because of the aforementioned gradients, which were not kind, there was a last minute request to add River Earth to the, the fleet um, because it was felt the bug couldn't cope. I'm, I'm look, looking for confirmation here. This is well, brilliant. Th th this only became apparent though when the track was joined up and mm. the trains were physically mm -hmm. operated. So if you put it into context, until that point, the bug had tractive effort, mm. seemed to suit, <clears throat> and it seemed to still be a sensible idea. Mm. And the other problem they discovered was this one wouldn't go round the bend. And oh. I, I'm afraid I must put it, I must find <laughs> it and put it in the system. But I do have a picture in the works where Roger had, had lifted the damn things and he was doing what you do to your trying princess to make it go around corners. He was carving the inside of the cylinders away yeah, yeah, so that the pony truck could traverse. So they're still cut, cut out There's even now. Yeah. All yeah. yeah. oh, right. It, it was painted red specially, wasn't it? it wasn't they, yeah. it, but they wanted a red engine. Hmm. So that's Samson. But they only discovered all these things once they got them there. Once the railway could be run Operate. with trains. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And that's, even when um, we were delivering things, the bizarre thing was when the rail could we go with one wagon load at a time and you go one day and you'd see lots and lots of men nailing in fence posts mm. and the next day the entire site would be fenced right okay. and then another day it would be something else happened mm -hmm. so it's like production gardening yeah. 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 yeah it was gobsmacking that that's that's a really nice shot of uh, lovely, the prince yeah. yeah i think it ended up as a postcard if memory serves uh, uh, Dave, they kind of ended up with River Hurt slightly by default because, as Peter said, you know, the, the engines that were there were supposed to be the ones for the job. And it was a very late, last minute call to the Raven Glass Nestale Railway for a steam locomotive. Um, I mean, obviously, for reasons, you know, that would be slightly political, it wasn't probably the best to uh, let the mic go. Um, and I think that was the one that was in steam. I think I've got a memory of working the weekend that the balloon suddenly went up and we need a, we need a steam engine. I'm, I've got this idea in my head that I was actually driving the mic that weekend. Um, but I suspect we probably had one of, one of the other two in bits um, and that the earth was, you know, in one piece. Um, and Douglas was concerned that uh, would would the locomotive be up to the job? Didn't want to lose any, you know, any kudos and end up with a red face if it wasn't. So we did take it out. Um, I can't I don't know if Peter was with me, but I certainly went out with about fourteen bogies on and did some standing start work from the mill and halfway up Mill Wood, um, run round. At, Mike side back down, run round at Ravenglass, all that kind of thing, and did probably half a day doing that. And Douglas came out with us at least a couple of occasions. And it was fine. I mean, the engine did the job. I mean, we had 14 bogies, but they were empty. But the trouble was we were suffering a little bit with tube trouble at the time. Uh, nothing, nothing major. We got over most of our issues, but we still were known to have the occasional weeping tube. And the earth had had problems with the occasional weeping tube. And I'm afraid that the strain and the effort and the work that we'd been doing caused it to weep a little bit more. Um, the tubes were expanded. We did run again, light engine and a couple of carriages. It was all fine and tickety-boo. But I'm afraid when the engine got there and further on into the story, and Peter will probably remember a bit more as we go along, uh, we did have a little bit of trouble with it, but we'll come to that as we, we move on. So just a couple of things that have come in while we've been talking. Uh, Matthew Pye was asking, 
what the radius on the corners was. I think we can say tanks. Well, it was somebody worked out that the trains would go up uh, one in 50 gradients, mm -hmm. and I think it was 150 metre uh, radius. Mm -hmm. Was it 50 metres? 150 yeah, 50 metres, Peter, 150 yeah. feet. Yeah, it was the equivalent of going up our Based on the worst spout house. house. Round spout house. Right. Yeah, worst of spout house. But then the architects designed something like that into the system. Right, OK. And more to the point, they did it again at Gateshead. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one that's come in mm -hmm. is Jacob, who's clearly eagle-eyed, has spotted that it's got two whistles um, there. One looks like a chime whistle, and the other one looks like... A different sort of whistle. Um, must have just added a bit of flavour to the yeah. events, really. I mean, the other issue that possibly was concerning Douglas was the engine was straight out of an overhaul and it was retired. So its wheels were actually bigger mm -hmm. than they had been, uh, nearly a couple of inches. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'd be it. Yeah. And it, it hadn't run until these runs that Trevor was on about. Yes. Um, and in fact, I got the job over literally a weekend. Um, it was give it a coat of paint. And over the weekend, it was right the Raven Glass and Estelle Railway on the side. Right. OK. <laughs> Get it ready and dry yeah. for Monday morning. I mean, it was on a wagon on Monday morning. <laughs> Whatever condition it was. <laughs> And you'll also notice the addition of the centre coupling and the square buffers. Uh, so ah. Christopher thinks the second whistle belonged to Seamus Rogers, who was a regular driver at the festival. Mm. <laughs> All right. And that's probably correct, because Christopher is usually correct on these matters. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we must have had to frantically make some buffers in the workshop, unless we pinched them from wrongly. I don't know where they came from, but mm. um, do you have square buffers at Omni? Red Gordon's got them. So <laughs> I, I think they got made up. Mm. I mean, it literally was, and on the spur of the Together, Oh My yeah. God from yes. Liverpool, and like Trevor was saying, there weren't many engines in no. working order. And this one was actually, it had been thoroughly overhauled. Mm -hmm. Um, so, in theory, if it had been run in, it should have uh, should have been all right. Uh, yeah, not given any. I mean, you know, Seamus kept it absolutely immaculate. Uh, <clears throat> and the intended relief for lunch times and a couple of other trips was uh, our Sheila, and. Um, this is Martin Willey just um, getting it off Stuart Harrison's wagon and Stuart's keeping quite a BDI on, uh, on the operation. And then Nigel's asked, did Prince come from Liverpool to Roman Glass in exchange for a time? I remember guarding for it in around 1983. That was the other way was around. It, the other way around? Mm. it went to Raven Glass while Sheila was at Romney working the first school train systems. Right. Uh, and then it went mm -hmm. to Liverpool. <clears throat> there we are. So we've got to get the royal bit out of the way. So uh, <laughs> here we go. Um, she arrived and they went up and over the footbridge to join Samson and the Royal Saloon, driven by Richard Batten. Richard, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I can't quite figure the sequence out on this because they seem to be going the wrong way. So I don't know whether they, I know they went round the circuit and then stopped for lunch. And I don't know whether this is them just getting off and going to lunch. So I, I may have got there the sequence. Another picture with the Queen coming up behind Richard. 
that have been straight ahead petrified. Yes. <laughs> in that position, Roger Marsh is nearest the camera on that. That one. Is it that one? There you go. <laughs> so yeah. he looks, yeah. Well, he obviously must have done something. <laughs> So uh, whether he felt it wasn't as smooth as he'd, he'd hoped, uh, we don't know. And the other thing that I... So I've been discussing Haywood components. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. we'll draw about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just exactly how much of Ella is actually on Sheila is under debate, shall we say. The, the other thing I haven't worked out and haven't been able to find on any maps is where exactly the SS Taifu was. Um, it's obviously somewhere where they stopped, but we have a colour picture later on and it's something we've got the guide, but I, I still can't figure it out. So um, see what the chat is. Go ahead. Something's coming. <laughs> Is that Prince Philip on the right? Yes. Yes. That's an easy one. I can yes. manage that. <laughs> and this is Sheila in the Royal Saloon. This is after lunch. And they were going back down the branch um, to where presumably the cars were waiting at the Herculaneum station. And off they pop, and Douglas actually managed to get close enough to get some pictures on this one. And press camera there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the one. And that, that, that's quite nice because um, Philip's looking back and thinking, could I have a play? I vaguely remember <laughs> that. <laughs> Was this after he'd landed his helicopter? Uh, probably yes. Yeah. yeah, when he went to the outward bound. And somebody, somebody out there in the wide world. <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. No, no, Dave, no. Dave's got a picture. Wait, wait. No, no. We put a plate on the side of. <laughs> <laughs> wait and see. Wait and see. Yeah, it's coming. It's really? coming. Yeah. Yes. We, what I was going okay. to say was <laughs> the <laughs> just to identify some of the people. The gentleman on camera right of, of Her Majesty was uh, a Mr. Leslie Young, who was chair of the Merseyside Development Corporation. <laughs> she doesn't look very impressed after going behind Sheila. It may have been just as much the company. Um, no, I didn't say that. You'll have to edit that out now. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll ignore that. And on, on the left, um, to the left of Prince Philip, is Lord Aberconway, who was president of the Royal Horticultural Society. And they were the, the sort of prime movers behind the garden part of it. I thought we'd mention the garden. Um, as, well, it was an international know, garden, garden festival. festival. Yes, he, he and was. With respect, to whatever was intended, the whole site was magnificent. Mm. Really, and the yeah, transformation. We, we, we've got a few nice pictures yeah. of flowers yeah. coming up. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> we'll go There's on the to plates. well the plates. Um, they were only put on afterwards. They were put on afterwards, inevitably, and they have since disappeared. Well, and it, there it is was a nicked. Process. Yes. Right, there's a process in hand to replace them. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Martin. So the original is out there still. Was well, just one. Should original. be two. Sorry? Should be two, shouldn't it? I can't. Isn't the one on, on no, I, either side? I don't. I'm, I'm told that both sets of screws are still there. Right. In that case. So I assumed. Mm. <laughs> So I don't know why I put that in, just to sort of get a, a feel of where everything was. Um, and as I hadn't got a preview on this one, I'll just have to go for it. All right. Um, so the point was up at the top of the plan was the engine shed and um, carriage sidings. And that's a sort of general view across to it. 
um, and the shed itself. Now, someone may well be able to help me here. Um, I've, I've got records that say that Harry Hennessy was the driver of Samson, the regular driver of Samson, but I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> So if anyone out there can help, see the guy sitting between Samson and, and Ert. Um, he appears later on closer up, and we'd love to know whether it is actually him uh, with Prince on the right. Um, and again, I, I'm assuming we're tube cleaning at this point, are we? Uh, on Black Prince, are we brushing the tubes out? Maybe. Mm -hmm. That's not a, that's not overall cleaning tubes in there, is it? The ladies. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh yes, what I, what I was going to say at that point. I'm sorry, I've I've been not looking at my notes. <laughs> it was exactly at this time that the effects of the minor strike began to take hold, and back at the Ratty, I was going to say. Sorry, um, we had some Scottish anthracite and some American coal, and Esk was the only one that would burn the American coal quite cleanly. All the rest of them produced brown smoke, and I had to sort of throw that in as a, a reenactment. It's a, yes. a perfect. <laughs> it yes. is ten years later. Yeah, yeah. As well, no, it's postgate sir. <laughs> but um sorry. Uh, that's the gentleman that we think might be Harry wore cloth cap Simon I think that's Simon Batten. Oh right. Yes. Right. Has he got one on there? I can't no, see he's if he's a top. Ah. Yeah. Oh yes, oh yes. Um yeah, so you know, we we look out for responses of anyone who might know him and that was one of the specials that, that's <laughs> not how he gave lovely thank you just <laughs> <laughs> a previous one about martin oh, it was yeah i wasn't to sure be fair from... martin well he could always produce brown <laughs> 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 i'll edit that bit out <laughs> Well, thanks, Nigel. When when Black Prince first appeared, and it was his engine that earlier time that we just referred to, poor Celia was in the bungalow, and she came out. Well, basically, Black Prince would sit outside the bungalow. The smoke would enter her living room. She'd open the doors and windows. She'd just get rid of the smoke when Black Prince, two hours later, would come yeah, round and die outside her living room. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And this is um, right up at the, the top of the plan again, and Prince is coming presumably to join the main line, and Ert is coming back round, having gone round the left-hand spectacle uh, along that section that was dual track. And we reckon this could be quite early because they've still got black plastic over whatever it is that's <laughs> under there. Oh, well, oh, don't know if you're covering it later, but there's a three minute clip on YouTube or black pins. I will put the link on when I finally get them on YouTube, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Matthew might just have volunteered himself as the moving picture volunteer, because <laughs> we do need somebody um, to look after. And then we thought we'd put that in because it's roles reversed on that one. Um, Prince is coming off the left-hand spectacle. Um, still seem to have some cable left. Yes. Which, uh, Careful. Nobody's going to say it. No, you can't <laughs> yeah. say that. Yeah, please. Got if Dave, if you pop back one shot, yeah, the uh, point rodding and such like, and the ground frame, and any work with the points and getting them working properly, etc. 
uh, Glyn Wells and Gordon Nickel went down and spent quite a few days down there doing all that work. Right, yes, I, I have got a note of that. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure whether you knew, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I thought it was sort of slightly political in that we didn't get the contract for laying the, um, the rest of the line. No, 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 that's true. I mean, we just got the, the jobs with things in the background. <laughs> Uh, the track was laid by Henry Boot, Railway Engineering. So I will go back over it now you've mentioned it. And then um, Gordon and Glyn went down and sorted out the connection into the main line. There's a flat cap on that driver. Yeah. Mm, hard to tell. And again, you can see the, um, the carriage sidings in the back there. Um, I think quite a lot of the, the photos I've shown until now were early on before the, the flowers really started to make their presence felt. Um, and someone may well tell me the significance of the Royal Scott headboard. There's another version of it with more flowers this time. So did, did Romney send coaches or were they all the ones that were built at Carnford? Um, Romney sent six and 21 were built at Stimtown right, at okay. Carnford. And jumping ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's quite all right. Um, after the festival, some of them went to Britannia Park um, at Shipley Lake in Derbyshire, six miles east of where Sir Arthur Hayward's workshops were. Just a coincidence. Um, and then in 1996, they were sort of dispersed and five went to Oakwood Park in near Haverford West in Pembrokeshire, six to Sandy Bay Countryside Museum outside Exmouth, and seven semi-opens and guard saloons went to Gateshead. So some at least did reappear at Gateshead. And I've no note of what happened to them after that. Japan, I think so. Yes. I couldn't tell you exactly what were. They went back to Steamtown and they were rebuilt for Japan. Thank you. I'll just hand that in for me notes. Forgotten about that. But the planting was sort of a bit like the, uh, the local um, part, for want of a better mm -hmm. word. It just happened and it changed. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's, it was, you know, a major European event. Yes. And uh, it was really something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, it obviously had a reason for doing it, but regenerating Liverpool. Mm -hmm. It had a lot to do with. Sorry. Yeah, this is this is looking back down towards the Herculaneum entrance, and you can see it, it doesn't look a particularly steep slope. But if you're um, not so hot on your feet, um, the option of using Silver Jubilee to go around the side. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's uh, Black Prince heading for the tunnel, which was another little feature. Um, it wasn't a massive one, but the, it carried a road over the top of it. And I think we have the cutting a little bit further back as well. Um, <clears throat> this this is the bottom of the right hand spectacle with Festival Hall. Um, it's going around the bottom of that. And the curious um, blue and red tubes are part of, I suppose you'd call it um, a basic dome structure because a lot of it was suspended on the, the derrick that you can see. And, these two others. Um, 
and this is just a little bit further on from that. It's pulling around. There was a, a sculpture zoo. Um, you can't actually see that there's there's a red creature just yeah. above the first coach. The others must have escaped. <laughs> Uh, the one that always stands out is the pelican, because everyone seems to take a photo <laughs> of the pelican. Uh, so there, there were a few set up on that. And this is obviously Sheila on one of the relief turns, and I threw it in because the branch does actually connect to the main line at that point. I didn't realise the carriage is carried sponsorship yes um, um, no, gates that they have an horrible doctor who yes stickers on everything and yeah, that's quite subtle <laughs> yes i still got one of those stickers at romney on the compressor in the carriage wagon really <laughs> so that's what's the 30 eight years later yeah it's still there <laughs> it's stuck it obviously come off someone just stuck it on the compressor and it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant <laughs> Uh, right, that's yeah, that's taken us through the night west coaches. That's all right. I'm just going back to my notes. I do use them occasionally. Um, so again, you know, we we thought we'd feature a few more uh, flowers, and th this will be on the jewel uh, gauge uh, jewel track section at the top of the spectacles. Um, you can see, even from some of the earlier pictures, that it has matured a bit mm -hmm. and, um, on in. And there's the colour version of the SS Typhoon, <laughs> um, and lots of colourful carpet of plants. So it's meant to be the sea. Is that the vacuum pipe in front of the cylinders? Uh, yes, it was Must changed. Be, yeah. It was changed in that quick turnover to a vacuum mm. operation, mm -hmm. wasn't it? And that's the aforementioned laser dome, and it, it does have. Well, sort of the shades of Millennium Dome about it, exactly yeah. so yes yeah but if you think you know, this was quite a long a long time before the Millennium Dome so Matthew Pye of the three engines at Liverpool which was best suited to the railway and James Taylor has asked how was train control managed and could they have multiple trains on the main circuit? <clears throat> yes, and, is the answer to that. Um, and Simon put, there were four sea workers on the day when I went to the young age, the bug was working. Ooh. All right. Yeah, we, we, do, we do have one of those rare pictures of the bug, which may well be coming up shortly. Um, I don't know in terms of the operation. I do know that, <laughs> I'm having to go back. Um, according to the article I read, it was fully track circuited with color light signals and the extra warning lights at the 12 manned crossings. So they, they really weren't taking any chances on that. Was it um, used for job creation as well? Like things in it the 80s were. May well have been. Yeah. Um, no one I, mentions it in I the article. I have a feeling one of the holdups with the system was that I think in Trevor, like, no, this as well. Um, I think there was only one spare section, or so, there were right, okay. lots of extra sections. Mm -hmm. uh, it might not be simply one, it's probably, probably about two, but it, something had to move before. Anything else could move, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So mm. by the time you've got the loading and unloading at different stations, um, it did limit the, if you like, capacity of the thing. Yeah. But it meant that the trains were full, but then they were trying to make time up, for want of a better word. So yeah. the echo of the noise mm -hmm. of the exhaust was in the background to the mm -hmm. site. Um, 
I think later on when they got to Glasgow, they did build in more. Somebody got ahead around mm. the fact that you need, you need more capacity. space yes. in the system to be able to run it efficiently. Well, that's a good time for cool lights. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I didn't write it down, but I think it might have been Plassey who provided mm -hmm. all the colour lights. Yeah. And that is the higher up carriage at the back, the disabled carriage. Yeah. 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 Because I've but seen pictures, yeah. They're the ones that went on mm -hmm. to Japan. Look for me, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, oh, there, there we are. Nice, nice little shot of um, the bug and the prince together. Is that Richard Batten? Mm, I would have said not. Well, I may be wrong. I'll stand corrected Probably. if anyone wants to join me. <laughs> For all that people were wondering about which was better suited, mm -hmm. they all had to work together. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall anybody being particularly worried about uh, slipping, mm -hmm. i.e., you know, some of them had standards and some of them didn't do. The red one didn't. Um, and no doubt Seamus will come out with stories. <clears throat> Oh, and as it takes us to the last day, we'll throw some figures at you. Um, the total passenger journeys, they reckoned, were 1,920,880. And of that total, half a million were on the branch with Silver Jubilee. Yeah. And I'm told the total mileage was. 17,657 miles. So they put in quite a good shift. How many months was it? Five. Right, okay. That's a lot of miles, actually, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Someone's commented on something. Oh. Yes, that was Richard on the boat. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you, you. You can add it to your notes. Yeah. We're all three engine operations I think there are three engines out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the place was drank. Um, and it was quite a long day. You know, it went out the whole weekend. I think the story was that River Earth was always shining when it went out. There might have been. Um, um, should we say issues about when it should come out and join the rest of the play? But it was always shiny. Um, yeah, so that's a couple of shots from the last day, and then I don't know where we can we got this one from, but it's um, Samson returning to home ground. And to round it off, oh, we have a reunion, <laughs> a lovely <laughs> reunion picture. <clears throat> then, if I may be permitted, I don't know how we're doing for time. Let me see, someone's added something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the day that I was there, the three main line trains and the bug had kept. I remember it though. Oh, All right. Yeah. People are typing too quickly for us, Dave. Here, let's go. I did it. My memory of that was how busy the railway was. Yeah. And you had to queue up to ride on the trains. Well, I think I think part of that, as far as I understand it, was that the intention was that people would get on at one station and go to the next station to go to the next area. But everyone liked riding the train, so they all stayed on. And but I think that caused problems. I can remember at Gateshead, um, yeah, it was a bit like Disney do, where you have to get off at, or at the time, you had to get off at certain points, yeah. so you couldn't do the whole circuit. Yeah. And so it was a bit that sort of theme park. Yeah, they may have learned yeah. quite a lot. This was, after all, the first one. 
I mean, the real oh, tragedy of the show. I mean, I went on it. I went to. Was it purely a daytime operation? Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, it might have been a long day, but it was yeah, something like that. How far into the evening, sort of thing, yeah. before they they, they yeah. stopped it? I've never seen any pictures of night operations. No, I, no, I, I've not seen any mention of it. But like I say, I didn't actually make it there, so can't be sure. And. If someone can help us, we'd be grateful. Um, so that's that's well, the Richard, Richard Priestley had a lot to do with it. I'm trying to think um, whose mother was at parents rather were at Muckers the Mill. I um, Dave, David GWR heard there was occasions when enthusiasts were chased out the shed. <laughs> well, I, that wouldn't surprise me. And Robert Fox visited towards the end and remember not being allowed to travel more than one or two stations in a go. Yeah. Ah, right. Yes. Yeah, so they'd obviously picked up on that. Mm. Um, yes, it is Katie behind the bug on the reunion one. So that, that sort of draws a, a little bit of a line under that. And we thought we'd throw in a few, some of them are questions, some of them are follow-ons. Um, we mentioned recently when we were talking about water power, Trevor mentioned the fact that they felled the trees on the coppice and the, the timber from that was used for the bar in the Ratty Arms. So I thought I'd pull those out with one of their favorite customers sitting at the end of the did, bar there. Did Trevor say how we cut the trees yes. down with a large crosscut saw? Yes. And every time the tree creaked, people stood back rapidly, <laughs> I think is the word. Brown underpants were not needed. They were already there. And we thought we'd put in the um, ah. the various crew. Now, I'm going to get told off because I'm sure someone's told me before, but the... George Staniforth is holding a pint. The young lad on the right, I'm sure I've been told his name, but I haven't found the note when someone told me, so if anyone can help. It's, um, Dave, it's Raymond Harrington. Ah, uh, right. He was an apprentice engineer with us. That's brilliant. Thanks, Trevor. You probably, it's probably you who's told me before. Right? Yeah, probably, yeah. I'll, I'll try and um, put it away properly this time. That fellow on the left. You're <laughs> looking like <laughs> Dodgy, dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> And Nigel's commented, good Lord, a picture of George. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matthew Pye didn't know there was a pool table in the Ratty Arms. Now times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. And this one is a bit of a wing and a prayer, but we have, we've recently acquired this, this photo and partly because of the, the engine behind, we think it might be Ernest Twining. Um, but again, if anyone can help, we can show him at an earlier stage. That, that's a, an earlier portrait of him. And it would be fascinating to find out if that is him. Um, because he, he did more designing than most people give them credit for. Uh, so that's that. And finally, um, we've also found this photo recently, and we're not sure who the driver is. <laughs> the, is well, it my, David Webb? Yeah, my money's on David Webb having a little play. Ah, right. That's useful. Um, I think, Peter, would you not say? I will, sorry, I'm look, trying to look at the slide. I think you're pretty fair, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sorry, from this angle, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Right, that's, that's excellent. And that's my lot, I'm afraid. Well, you'd be <laughs> pleased to hear one or the other. So I think oh. we have... Can't get me. There we are. I think we've covered most of the chats. Um, 
Sean McLaughlin of the Kirkley East Light Railway is bickering that the Katie picture in the unknown man's <laughs> is the better Katie. Can't possibly comment. <laughs> um, I'll picked up. And the, the bolt holes for reverse buffers have been there ever since, haven't they? Absolutely. Yes. Adding to its character. And Mind it might be worth putting in that Sheila came back from Romney with a false buffer beam, which was carved out of that splendid princess that never got any further than the mainframes. Oh. So the lump of steel is the memorial to the poor local builder who mm. um, had financial H difficulties. HS Bullock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, did so, railways involve benefit from the project after the event and was it a financial success? A question from Jordan. Um, I may have to get back on you uh, to you on that because I haven't read the whole of the catalogue. Um, and the catalogue was produced after the Queen had opened it. And there were a couple of assumptions. So I'll, I'll chase that up. But I think, I think it was regarded as a, a success because it didn't put the muckers on the next three All the festivals. following garden festivals until the very end had a railway of a similar time. And, uh, it did, had... Did Stoke? It yeah. Stoke had... Stoke uh, had the funny, age, the funny thing. Two foot things. Mm. Oh, right. Rather industrial looking. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about it was that the whole thing worked. It may mm. not have... It, it didn't let the show down. Mm. I mean, it came out of, to some degree, that exhibition in the National Rowing Museum. Mm. I think the original idea they have been talking about a two foot, 60 centimetre something, and then somebody got the idea, I think it was actually um, John. John Ardenna. Milner. Yes. I think he put an awful lot of things because he was connected uh, with the original project mm -hmm. development board. Right, okay. And I think the thought was there are en you don't have to invent a set of engines, you don't have, you might have to build new carriages, but mm -hmm. there are machines out there that could do the job. Um, mm. I mean the tragedy was it got ripped up so fast. I mean, the poor lads who tried to keep a railway there, uh, uh, Richard Priestley and others who have been involved on the background supporting things, they weren't turned out the engine chips. Um, <clears throat> I hope that, what should we say, the rump site could keep a railway as a, as a municipal mm -hmm. park with mm -hmm. something special. Uh, however, as soon as the site stopped opening to the public. They gassed the tracks at the crossing, so mm. the rest followed on. So uh, Sarah B um, can remember having a good day out there. Oh, I mean, it's a tragedy for all the sites because they were all worth keeping, like the Germans have kept them and the Dutch have kept them. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, it's Matthew here. I was I was going to ask. Um, I had heard that they plan try to keep the railways open. What was the plan for motive power? Did they plan to keep hiring engines, or did they did they plan to buy or build their own? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In a single word, um, I know when the stuff got moved to the Britannia Park operation, and probably because Douglas was consultation person on that. Um, they were loaned Sheila for a while, 
and they got some of the coaches and they were hoping they had grand plans for getting all the way around the lake and having the steam engine and, and lots. But when the receivers get call, called in at the end of the first year, you wonder how much of the plans were realistic. So, but well, only like, you know, your valley ended up in a financial pickle. Mm. Um, you know, the, the capital cost of doing these things um, is, what should we say, it's long term, well, and probably would never be realistically commercial. No. Unless you had a Disney type, mm. you know, set up around it. It is interesting that none of the theme park, well, they weren't theme park operators that we have now were still very embryonic at this point in time. They weren't the big multi-million pound international companies that they are today. But the, the, that, that model of how you look after the public and things is very like what you see in all major theme parks today with the sort of landscape managing queues and all that. And it's all there. When you look at the pictures, it's all thought out. Um, so the, 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 in some ways, it's quite ahead of the time. Or oh, the doing of it, I don't think, has ever been really appreciated. Mm. What struck me, we were, we were going, not every day, day after day, but Trevor and I and Martin would go, and then you'd take another load down with the man on the lorry. And, you know, you might go two days apart, as I say. The change, because mm. they threw labour, at doing a task and then that task got mm -hmm. done yes and then there was another task it, it, it was the complete opposite of anything we'd ever been involved in you know where you made it happen but mm. you know there was a vague idea it ought to finish then mm. this was organized and, uh, and Murray, Murray suggested that perhaps the fairborn 15 inch gauge equipment that was on the market in 1985 would have been a useful source of, mo of rolling stock for the railway if it survived. Yeah, I mean, it, but what should we say? Obviously, I suppose the thing would be that you couldn't envisage running it as a low key operation, having gone through what is happening. No, once the Rasmataz goes, yeah. it's not the but, same. It would have survived mm -hmm. within the what they were hoping to keep there. Yeah, it would have to have turned into a Ooh. a circle because the left hand spectacle is now housing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and very suburban looking housing yeah. as well. They don't do miniature or as usual. <laughs> but then the rest of it hasn't. It's just got no. overgrown. Mm -hmm. Well, there's still the problem of the methane. So. <laughs> yeah, just a minor problem. Well, on that note, <laughs> it's probably time to draw things to a close. But thank you all for watching again this evening. We will be back. Gosh, it will be December, Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we could do some special shoot. Uh, yeah. Did a. Or the, did the evolution of the sleigh. I might have done the track read. Yes. Um, well, we. We'll have a think. Yes. yes. But thank you everyone for watching. Um, and we will see you all again uh, next month. So thank you very much and uh, good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.